minute, a minute early in Ellsworth time. <laughs> Okay, we're going to call the meeting to order this uh, Transportation Committee meeting for September 7th, believe it or not. That beginning of the month's going by already. Okay, first item under uh, the agenda roll calls, all members are present. And um, so we obviously we have a quorum then. First item then, action item is approval of the minutes for the August 3rd regular meeting. I would then entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Motion member Lehman, second member Klein. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, next item then is the payment of bills and appropriate transfer request forms. Uh, I don't see that we have a transfer. Everyone has, uh, I believe, got email, a copy of the bills. Are there any questions? Motion to, all right, motion by member Friedrich, second. Member Thompson. Um, on my copy here, it's a last page. It's not, I guess it is a question. Um, I'm sorry. Next to the last in the purchase of right away. And this is just a general question. Do we have a particular formula or number that we go with or do we negotiate with the landowners or how do we do that when we purchase right away? So we look at the recent sales that, that have happened in the last you know, six months or, and, uh, and go off of that and okay. try to get an average of, of what uh, what we're looking at, and then we and so we set the same price for every so every landowner along along the road. Okay. Do you ever have any any disagreement or confrontation, or how does that go on? How does that work? Uh, yeah, there is there is some uh, <laughs> disagreements that you know they might not agree with the the price, but they might compare um, a parcel of land that's sold just like let's say outside of town or outside right. normal that went for. A lot more money, or independent, or where the, the type of soil it is, and, and that type of thing. So, um, but you know, we kind of just tell them that you know uh, the benefit for the road and, and upgrading the road to eighty thousand pounds is, is a better benefit. And um, so this on this this is actually for the Meadows Road project. And um, well, I think we have like ninety five percent of the right of way um, completed on that. So. Everybody's all been on board so far. And again, by looking at the numbers, we don't generally buy acres and acres. It's usually a fraction of an yeah, acre. Yeah, I think whatever. this majority is like 10 foot, uh, additional yeah. 10 foot. So they, depending on you know how much frontage is, is along the county highway, it may end up being you know just a few tenths or half an acre. Okay. Here and there. There's a couple other bigger parcels that, that have more than that. Okay. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, so we have uh, appearances by members of the public and county employees. Um, I know we have some people. Are we going to wait and have them speak now? Chairman Solner, we are going to have them w uh, wait and speak in the uh, Section 5B2 for the non-highway vehicle ordinance discussion, and that way we could have discussion back and forth. Okay, and were there any others? No others. Okay. All right. Okay, first item then under departmental matters is the request approval of a resolution for the August 26, 2021 equipment letting and resolution of surplus property. Who would like to make that motion? Member Thompson, second member Wachinski. All right, Jerry, you want to lead us on this? Sure. So these are a couple um, duly one-ton dump trucks that have been looking to to purchase, actually, I think I, we started looking at this back in uh, early 2020. Um, we were waiting on the state bid to come through, and um, it never did. And then we tried it again. I think we actually had a had a we brought it through committee and um, took it through and got everything approved. And then uh, the dealer said that they couldn't they couldn't do it because it wasn't the state bid wasn't available yet. So. Anyway, finally, I didn't, I, um, I didn't rely on the state bid and decided just to go out and bid it on, on our own. And so this is where, um, wh what happened. And so Bob Ridings from Taylorville was a little bitter for both of these uh, vehicles. 
And uh, and Bob Ridings, they do a lot of the the fleet management vehicle type trucks. So they're um, really averse to what's going on and what what we were after. So, um, because both the so the two trucks that we were looking to, to for the surplus, um, I think we already have. They're already like around one hundred sixty thousand. And so it may take like six months to get these trucks in, depending on you know when it, when the production starts. But I figured we needed to get it in the queue before we were, you know, really in a desperate need. Any questions? So it says these are dualies. One's a regular cab. The other one's a crew cab with dump beds. So do the, does the writings provide the bed or do we go somewhere else for that? It's all included in the bid, um, but they'll be working um, with an, uh, a subcontractor right. on their own to, to, to build it per our specs. Right, and then the ones that we are going to sell, they also have beds on them? They do. Okay, um, and I noticed that the difference is about $4,000 for a crew cab and a regular cab. Um, I assume the crew cab is because you have times when you want to haul more people, or is that the idea? Yeah, a lot of times when we're uh, we're using these trucks for like when we do some crack sealing, and so we'll hire um, college uh, kids to, to do that type of work, and so one of them's pulling the tanker, and one of them's pulling the the blower and the compressor and that type of thing. So um, it just it works better to, to be able to go out and do that all, all okay. in one shot instead of taking multiple vehicles. Okay. Any other questions? All right, ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Next item is request approval to update county ordinance imposing weight limits. Who would like to make that motion? Member Friedrich. Second, Member Thompson. All right, Jerry. So this is uh, our county weight ordinance that we update every couple of years to um, to address the, the roads that have been upgraded to 80,000 pounds or the roads that have been resurfaced and are not necessarily um, what we call um, tarp, tarp roads or truck access roads, but they still have been uh, improved to the 80,000 um, pound um, weight limit. So all the ones that, that are in bold are kind of the changes where, we, um, where we've resurfaced these roads the last couple of years and, and the weight limits need to be modified accordingly. All right. Do you ever lower any of the weight limits on any? We have not. Okay. All right. Any questions, Member Friedrich? Yes. Um, Jerry, I'll probably visit with you more about this and not take up the committee's time. Because um, I'm always getting beat up by farmers uh, trying to get seed and inputs in in the spring of the year. And oftentimes it's earlier than April 15th. So my basic question is, five or 10 years ago, you used to be able to buy a permit to upsize for just a little bit more weight. Is that correct? You could go from 36,000 to 50,000. Did we do that in this county? No, not that I'm aware of. So to get a an exemption or get a permit we have to get one and talk with you to yes to right and that was never a fee the applicant never paid a fee to get a permit if if it depended on the conditions of the road if um if the conditions were fit well more like when it was re like if um when we posted roads in january and then in February, they things froze back up. We would allow permits to go, and we would write permits during that time period and not charge okay. anything. Are you doing that in-house, or are you subbing that process out now to somebody, a third party? We do have a third party that um, that handles the, the permit. application side of the permits. We still approve all the permits in-house. Uh, when, when they're submitted to us, but there's a, a website that we have called Oxcart that is the third party vendor. And that, that's not only used for spring posting, but it's all used for overweight, over, oversized permits throughout the year. Okay. Um, have you 
heard any concerns about using this third party person? It's not user friendly and things like that. I mean, I think we had some kinks there early on, but we've been doing this process for two years now, or at least, and um, you know, we ironed some of those out, I believe. Okay. Um, well, we'll vis visit about that later. I, I just wanted to bring it, bring that up to your attention. We're having some issues with that. Okay. Um, not being quite as easy as it was three years ago when we just called in and talked to Rhonda and said, hey, we need a permit. Um, what's my second question? I, I guess that's it. Um, it. People from the outside looking in, we as farmers sometimes need a little bit of leeway to start field work. And I understand that our roads are posted January 15th to April 15th. But a lot of times there needs to be a little common sense here that if we can work in the field, we can drive on the roads. I guess that's my statement. And, Gerald, you may chime in on that. We're not about trying to tear up our roads, okay? Um, case in point, like this, this spring, we're in the field. We cannot technically take a half a load of fertilizer to start our farming process, but the school bus, the garbage truck, the fuel trucks, they can deliver. And I get it, they're emergency vehicles, a lot of them are. But a school bus technically is breaking our own laws because they're overweight. So, um, and the garbage truck, I understand that. Case in point, Olympia, road that we're taking to 80,000, right? Mm -hmm. That school's been there for 45 years, and it's never been an all-weather 80,000-pound road. So you see food trucks going to Olympia School twice a week, and they're hauling like no other, and they have to. But then for a farmer to get some seed in, he will be denied each and every time. So it's kind of frustrating for us watching other vehicles every day running it, and we just want a little bit of leeway. I'll leave at that, and we can visit about that later. Okay, sure. I think the other issue, on, and you're referring pretty much to county roads. Obviously, the townships have their own thing, and and they may have a different a different setup altogether. And that's exactly right. The townships are actually easier to deal with than our county. And the reason that being is the township road commissioners are public elected officials. If they don't work with the community, we're going to vote them out. But this third-party stuff that we're uh, making the... The people in rural America, rural America follow those rules. They, they don't care. There's no repercussions if they deny uh, permits. The township road commissioners are better to deal with in the county. That that's another point. And it, they're elected. All right, Member Layman. Thank you. Uh, just to make sure that I, I fully understand some of the of the questions and what uh, we've learned from the packet. W the April 15th as that hard and fast date, um, what is that tied to? So, so it's just mainly tied to the, the spring thaws okay. when, uh, when, the, when the roads. So, so January 15th, April 15th is kind of the, the 90 days that we're allowed to post the roads. Okay. Sometimes it's not till February 1st, and sometimes we're taking the, the, um, the weight limits off April 1st. It just kind of depends on on the year and the weather. Last year was kind of an anomaly and with, you know, I think, was it March or in the February? It was, you know, 75 degrees, and, yeah, there were some farmers out working the fields. And, uh, and you know, we try to be consistent with the township road commissioners, and we do. Um, a lot of times we call them and, you know, get their view on what they want to do and try to, 
try to make sure that we're all working together so we're not doing that. Now there's probably townships that are letting letting certain guys go and not others and, and that or and maybe and maybe other townships aren't. But uh yeah, I mean I, I agree I was probably I this year we probably with the weather and work the the way it was, we probably should have been writing permits during that time period. I mean I was kinda of looking at the forecast and we try to do it like a week in advance. And that you know that was tough. You know, it just it didn't it just didn't pan out that way, and that was my fault. I mean, I'll take the blame on that um, uh, for this year. So, but mainly it's just it's weather dependent. Okay. Thank you for the answer. So there there's some wiggle room there then. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. We don't. You typically we never go to the April fifteenth. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I think we've gone to like maybe April fourth or fifth. Um, you know, and we we try to get them off as quick as we can sure. because it's. I mean, it's really no fun for us either. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for the background. Sure. Member Klein. So is there a website that you post when you're making those decisions? Is that easily accessible information for farmers to be able to, to find Yes. That? Yeah, it's, okay. it's on our website every every time it's updated, and it's so it's usually updated weekly. Okay. So they don't have to call and speak to somebody. It'll be publicly available. Right. Okay. And I, I believe probably the... The first farmer goes, and I think the rest of them will see that's their, that's their notice a lot of times. So uh, so anyhow, okay. Any other questions? Okay, we have a motion and a second. We're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, we are ready now then for 5A3, request approval of the weight limit resolutions. For Cropsey Road and Rop Road, and we'll have both of these under uh, one motion. Who wants to make that motion? Member Wachinski, second member Klein. All right, Jerry. So these uh, two roads were uh, we received uh, truck access route program funds, so the TARP funds to upgrade the road to eighty thousand pounds. One of them was a, a project that we are doing with Livingston County as part of a mile and a half of our Cropsey Road, and. Uh, and so that project's actually just got it was just completed here in the last couple of weeks, and uh, and then the second one was uh, the Rop Road project going from uh, White Oak to uh, Zvar, and uh, that project's pretty well completed as well. So, um, so these are uh, the designations to make them eighty thousand pound roads, and these will get sent into IDOT. And there's a um, IDOT has a map that shows all the eighty thousand pound routes in McLean County and other counties, and. Uh, and so they, they need this for that, and then it also matches our uh, weight, li weight limit ordinance. All right. Any questions? All right. All those in favor say aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, items for information. The first one would be the project summaries under Lexington East Road. Jerry, you want to go through all those? Sure. So uh, yeah, Lexington East Road project, um, part of the Bloom Grove Wind Farm um, from uh, Lexington Lee Road Road to Colfax Western Road uh, has all been. It's all completed. Everything's uh, done. We're doing some little maintenance work there, but it's um, all resurfaced, shouldered, uh, painted, uh, reflectors, and everything. So that uh, turned out well. Um, so we're working on kind of getting the final final numbers on that. Um, Washington Street car lock. This project's done as well. It turned out really good. So this is, um, I got some pictures here. This is at the, kind of at the school. This is looking towards uh, the west. And so this is the part where there was already additional curve and gutter. And then um, and then here looking back to the east, then there was two blocks that were, uh, that were put new curve and gutter. And it really helped the drainage. It really turned out well. Um, we did handicap ramps. Um, this is kind of the intersection at uh, 150 and Washington Street. And uh, here's another looking from the railroad, railroad tracks, looking to the west. And, um, and this is in front of the bank where we made a, a really good improvement to improve the drainage there and uh, resurface um, in front. And then here's, here's this picture looking to the um, back to the west again when it was striped. So um, this project was is coming in a little higher than what we anticipated. We made some changes out in the field to uh, on those parking areas. We extended a couple of them, and then a couple of the intersections. We had to 
we paid back a little farther than we were anticipating. So that increased uh, what we call the incidental hot mix and hot, incidental hot mix quantities from what was on the plan. So that uh, caused us to be uh, um, over on this project. Um, so next project is um, Rop Road project that we had mentioned. Um, so when we, we paved this um, a couple weeks ago and uh, we closed the road down and we paved it, um, we paved the full width of the road 22 foot wide. And so it's kind of hard to see there, but uh, so th there's the, the paver and then in front of this is called a material transfer device. And then these trucks back it up and dump it into this transfer device, which in turn remixes it and then puts it in the paver. And um, so they got scared of the rain, so they didn't get all, there's supposed to be three miles. We were doing all three miles in one day, but there was, there was a storm popping up. So we only got two miles done and they had to come back the next day and finish it. But uh, it really turned out a nice ride um, on the road. And uh, so you can kind of see here, so here's um, two sets of rollers that are, you know, that are behind the paver, and then they stay in each lane, uh, their corresponding lane, to do uh, to, to pave the road. And then way back here, there's some finished rollers. So um, it's uh, it's quite the process. I think they're running about 15 to 16 trucks. So you can see about six or seven of them lined up there, and. Uh, and so, um, so that project uh, is coming in well. This is with uh, um, IDOT funds, and so they're they're really the ones that kind of we'll have to pay a, a well, we don't know our portion of the project until the project's done and they invoice us for that. So um, on that, but everything's done on that. The guardrail and I think, and um, it has all been completed as well. Uh, Linden Street's another project that we have going on. Um, they just started that um, about a week and a half ago. Uh, this is where we have uh, safety shoulders to be placed uh, on the road. And um, we're going from Linden Street from Northtown to uh, Hudson and in, in Hudson, Franklin Street and Hudson. And so they've completed the widening and uh, are gonna be working on uh, getting the, the first lift of the hot mix uh, put on that road. And then the next project I have that's not really on the list is the uh, Tackett Bridge, kind of showing some final pictures of that. This was the uh, um, Township Bridge project out in Empire Township. So this is uh, just kind of give you, this is the existing structure that uh, that was done. And um, and then there is the, uh, the new structure here. So this is looking north. And um, so this is all completed. Uh, picture looking south and then there's a couple side views here of it um, so yeah um, so it's all completed and turned out really good any questions on the projects all right uh, then the next item is the non-highway vehicle ordinance discussion um, I guess uh, we do have some some guests here to speak. Uh, what would be the proper proper procedure? Do we need to discuss first? Go ahead, Matt. Give them the All right. Well, whoever wants to lead the uh, the contingent from from Hudson and introduce their uh, their people, I believe right here. Chairman. Are, are we making a decision today on this? Are we voting? Uh, no, I don't okay, believe we so are. Are we? Okay, just didn't know if we had to have a motion on the floor. Yeah, Thank it's you. not an action item. Right button. Thank you. It's been a few few months. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Mike O'Grady. I'm the supervisor of Hudson Township, and also with me is Dave Brutlog, the mayor of Hudson. Police chief from Hudson and one of the village trustees, Mr. King, I think. Is that correct? So um, thank you for giving us a little time on this. Uh, I did read the uh, highway commissioner's report, understand where he's coming from. Do have a couple of questions on that report, but let me say first, 
you know, Hudson, like probably many communities, has had a uh, ordinance that allows uh, golf carts on our city streets. And we do appreciate, look like in 17, that the county board approved crossings of those county roads. Um, each year, if you want to have one of those in the village, a golf cart in the village of Hudson, you have to go to the police department, have it inspected, uh, prove that you have insurance, have a slow moving vehicle sign, brake lights, headlights, turn signals, uh, in order to be able to get a permit, of which you also sign off on some liability, although we know you never really avoid liability, but um, it does, it is a tool and it is a piece of it. The problem that presents to the police department and, and to the citizens is confusion. I bet if I asked 50% of the village residents don't understand what's a county road and what's a Hudson road. Uh, to the point that there's a lot of stopping people to tell them, hey, you know, that's not appropriate, you're on the wrong spot. Um, our thoughts were if we could get an ordinance from the county approving within the village limits golf carts. And, and as I look at this, and I understand the concerns of, you know, interacting with other equipment, cars, trucks, et cetera, but as I look, bicycles, electric bicycles, electric scooters are all on our roads and legally on our roads and have less visibility than, and, and many of them traveling at 20 mile an hour if they want to. So I think from our perspective, this is actually a, a more visible piece of equipment, golf cart, et cetera, out there than say some of the others that are legally able to go out there. We have at least one spot in our village that an entire block is unable to make access to the rest of the Hudson streets because they're on account, you know, their exit is onto a county road. So our thoughts are, you know, could we look at doing something? And, and I can understand as an elected official myself, the concern and the re reluctance to do this, but I guess, and, and we can talk a little bit on the speeds, but I guess one of the things we'd like you to consider, if nothing else, could we try a trial period, six months or a year, and see if we have issues that may crop up in that. We did see the report showing the 85 percentile concern on, and I know the police department, and I kind of myself is, um, where were those taken? Because, you know, if it's somebody coming into the village, uh, when were they taken, and you know, where, how were they taken? How, how did you get this? The, the traffic counts. We we get that. The speed is what we were wondering is how that was determined. Sure. So our uh, our traffic counters um, that we put out on the roads, they're like little, little hockey pucks. Those can detect speed as well, and so and um, so then it generates a report. And these were taken on August eighteenth of 21 and so it gives, gives us a traffic count and then gives us the 85 percentile speed which is can be used to set speed limits um there's a little more to it than just the 85 percentile but that's mainly what the majority of people are going and so um one of the road or one of the locations we did this was right between the dollar general and shiner street right there as coming into town and so that's and that's where um what the average was, you know, 42 miles an hour um, in, in that section. So, um, and then the traffic count was 2,099. So you know, you're getting a lot of traffic from the interstate going to Casey's. Going and to Casey's, stuff, sure. Type of thing. And so, is that coming into town or going out of town that that it, would record? It's both. It's we both. We put them in both lanes, and so then we um, add them together to get the traffic counts, and then also get the um, get the. So I did an average. Um, the the westbound lane was so that'd be going out of town was forty three point eight four, and the eastbound lane coming into town was forty point nine. So it, it, it does does both each location specifically. Okay. 
So I, I get with that, I don't know if the mayor has anything that he wants to add or if you have questions uh, that would help with the discussion on this. This is really a question um, for Jerry. Um, so the, the road in question is Franklin Street, east and west. That's the, the road that the, you're, you're requesting to have used. And Broadway Street. And Broadway we, have, Street. we have two county roads okay. that run through our uh, Jerry, what is the history of that, of those two roads, in terms of county ownership versus town ownership? I mean, have these always been in the county roads? These have never been Hudson roads? And is there any consideration about maybe transferring these roads to the, to the city's domain, so to say? Sure. Yeah, so they've always been county roads. Um, going through town, and we've done all the maintenance improvements that uh, that needed to be done through there. Um, um, we would always entertain to um, to jurisdictional transfer roads um, in in municipalities if um, if it benefited the municipalities. Is that something the town would be interested in? I'm not sure. I, I'm obviously they'd have to. From my perspective, and I'm not on the village road, but I, I think cost and what would that cost be? Obviously, they'd gain some motor fuel tax, but would it be enough? And can they afford to take those over? I think there'd have to be some research on the village's part to determine that. Sorry, I have another question. So you said um, that there are vehicles that are legally on the roads, like scooters and things. Is that, are they truly electric, legal? Electric um, bicycles under state statute can be on city roads. We're talking electric bicycles, not not like razors or, you know, those. No, little, no. Okay. okay. Yeah. Clar clarify. Thank you. And I, and I say electric, when I'm pointing out, I think, is the speed that they're, you know, I'm, I'm amazed how fast some of them run. But, um, and I think there is some law that, that they can only run so fast, but. Uh, These are the motorized bicycles, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. For the time when the residents would go into the police station to have their, their vehicle inspected and to get the proper permitting, is there any discussion about which roads are county roads and is there like a, a map or something to help them better understand or is there? I think I'd ask. Uh, Police Chief Cotty, if he'd want to respond to that, I think there is, okay. uh, but I'm, I, I'm. I think they're given a map, if I'm correct. Yeah. Can you share? Uh, we need for you to be on a, on a mic. Yeah. The mic when you have it. <laughs> yes, we do explain to them the roads that they can be on and and explain that you know you can cross franklin you can cross areas of of these uh, county roads but you cannot drive your golf cart low speed vehicle on those types of roads so that's part of the permitting they get a copy of the ordinance and the explanation as we do the inspection of the vehicle we do How many uh, citizens of the village of Hudson have applied for a golf cart permit? I know, and I know you may not know that answer. Are we talking 10, 1,000? We currently have over 50. I think the last one was 55, 56, somewhere around there in, in our village. What kind of of inconvenience or level of pains are people experiencing by not being able to drive down these particular roads versus perhaps going a block out of the way and going on a Hudson Proper Road? Well, and it, that's what they have to do now is go a block out of the way. Uh, for example, the Dollar General that was recently built and there's no way to get to it. Uh, you know, it, you'd have to be on a county road for three or 400 feet in order to get into the Dollar General parking lot. Uh, Casey's is runs a lot Casey's general store another place that people go a lot they're gonna have to go down a side street of West Street in order to get to it they can't drive 
uh, down. So it's yes, it's an inconvenience of a block or so. That's not terrible. Um, you know, the the one group that cannot is at the far east end of Hudson, across from the cemetery, cannot get out of onto Village Streets because they're on they, their street exited onto a county road. So those members, and I think there's maybe 10 or 12 homes there, cannot get out into the rest unless they drive across people's private property. And do we know if there are uh, residents there that have a, a golf cart? There are. Okay. Thank you for the information. Sure. Just a, point of, just a point of clarification. So we're not talking about people going from their homes to a golf course. To where? To a golf course. This is about people no. using golf no. carts as a, a, a means of conveyance in town. It, it would only be within the confines of the municipality. But so I'm saying the current issue is that they're not being restricted to travel from home to a golf course by county roads. This is a desire to use the, the vehicle as a vehicle. As a vehicle use. within for everyday use within okay. the confines of the village of Hudson. Okay, like Florida. <laughs> Like the little yeah. villages of well, I've heard that term before. The villages of Hudson. When I was reading yeah. this, I was trying to figure out where is this big golf course course that everybody wants to get to. So that makes more sense to me. Yeah. So here, this is Kenneth Drive. So this is the dead end road where um, the access is right to um, to Franklin Street, which is uh, County Highway 12, and then um, so then here's Shiner Street, and then this the new Dollar General was built right here. And we, you know, we have been working with the county, and and we appreciate your expertise and help of trying to get a sidewalk from the village out to Dollar General because we've got a lot of kids and families. Kids love to go there and buy candy, and working with the county, they've helped us a lot in how to get a sidewalk across to that location, and we appreciate that. Can you pull up Broadway and Avenue? Oh, sure. Um, so here's Franklin, and so Broadway is right here in the middle of town. Um, it runs all the way down through here, and this is the road we're actually resurfacing now. You can go to McLean Street and work your way up into the rest of town, yes. Yeah, that we only did the speed study on County Highway 12. Um, there is a, <clears throat> we just pulled the rest of the traffic counts from the IDOT website. <clears throat> so then on Broadway Street, the traffic counts 900. <clears throat> okay. And then in this printout was just a comparison of some other, some of the other county highways uh, and, and, and other municipalities in, in the county. Okay. Well, again, it's not an action item on our on our agenda. It's obviously for information. Uh, again, would the mayor, would would trustee or anyone else like to make a comment? Again, if you would uh, introduce your name again. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dave Brutlog. I'm the mayor in Hudson. And again, I want to thank everyone for your time this morning. Uh, I just want to reemphasize that we currently have kids on bicycles riding on the county roads, especially going to Dollar General since they just opened. And when you've got 10 year old kids on bicycles compared to adults driving golf carts, uh, we think it's a lot safer for the golf carts to go on the county roads than the bicycles. And I can't justify to our residents why bicycles can get to Dollar General, but their golf carts can't. So, you know, we're bringing it to you to ask you to take a look at it and see if you can give us a hand there. And I'm sure some of the other uh, towns in McLean County are the same way. There's areas where they would like to have golf carts drive, but legally they can't. So we appreciate you looking at it. There was a big article in Sunday's Panagraph about how McLean County is really moving forward with wind energy and how many windmills we have, how much power we produce, and how good green energy is for us. 
and now we've got green vehicles that we can't drive on county roads, you know, in, in Hudson. So it's a little bit of, a, uh, of an irony, and uh, we sure appreciate you taking the time to, to think about it and hopefully discuss it in the future and uh, be able to help us out. So, yes. Thank you, Mayor. I just, I'm just sort of trying to refine this in my mind. So you're asking for permission for these vehicles to, you know, is there, are there specific points on Franklin, you know, because the, we have a, a highway that intersects, you know, here, an interstate that intersects. So is there a point at which they're not allowed to, I, I'm just trying to kind of drill down exactly where. And, and I do wonder whether having, having those sorts of stipulations will be just as confusing, right? It says, well, it's, I'm allowed on this side of Highway 12, but now I can't go past this block, things like that. I mean, that's one of the arguments is that it's confusing yeah. about which road they can be on. We yeah, what like are the actual parameters? Our, our initial thought is try to keep it simple, and if we just ask for permission within a, a few blocks, it could get pretty complex for, for the residents. Um, if we can get it on any of the county roads where the speed limit is 30 mile an hour within Hudson, you know, we'd be ecstatic with that type of thing. If that doesn't work, then we would probably see if there were certain areas that would be permissible for, for you to allow golf carts. So we could get to Dollar General, and so the residents on Kansas Street could take their golf carts legally out, you know, to... To West Street, at least to, to get their golf carts out. Where does the 35 mile an hour zone end? Is that what you have highlighted, Jerry? Because I'm I'm really more worried on the on the on the I guess I'm, I'm saying the west side of town. Yeah, I think the 30 mile an hour is probably the best thing to do at all times. Uh, because uh, I believe 30 mile an hour is probably the best way to get to the next point. Uh, 45. So that thir so the Dollar General is inside of the 35 mile an hour zone. Yeah, that's correct. It starts about where the cemetery is, where the the village resident or where the uh, village lines are. Member Wojcicki, go ahead. Um. So, I guess, um, my question is: the people that want to use golf carts have the option of using a vehicle, it's just they want to use a golf cart? Like a regular vehicle, they could just drive their regular vehicle to the Dollar General, oh, but they're wanting to use a golf cart. The, they could, yes. Okay. Um, I also, I guess my concern is you said, you know, you've got 10-year-olds on bicycles, and I, I understand that. Um, they're always going to have 10-year-olds on bicycles, so I'm concerned about adding another vehicle to the road that 10-year-olds on bicycles would have to deal with in an area where you're saying that it's popular for 10-year-olds on bicycles to be. Um, so that's just something I was thinking about in my head. So, um, I, what, I understand that. Yeah. And, the, you know, the people, we try and support local businesses and promote it. And the more business we can have, you know, the, the better we feel about it, the Dollar General is going to do okay and continue to, to survive in Hudson. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely a, a consideration, you know, do the people that like to use their golf carts to get around town, you know, are, are they going to instead drive a car out there? You know, it, it's, I can't answer that. I understand the, the concern. Frederick, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> we've attached, there's two attachments to this, attachment A and B. Have you seen this report, sir? Uh, no, I have not. Okay. Uh, then you could get back to me later. Uh, we've given a legal opinion as uh, a county with attachments supporting that legal opinion, I guess my question would be if there was something that the uh, you as mayor, if there's a line item on these things that uh, you would like to see changed or addressed to realize your goal. Okay, I'll be glad to take a look at it and, and correspond. Do you want me to correspond to 
Jim you call me. Me? Me? Call me. You okay. can call me. You know, yeah, look at attachment A and B. That's, a, that's our supporting evidence. Okay. I have seen the speed study, but I have not seen the... Yeah, just to clarify, so the attachment A is the, the current ordinance that the county, that the county has in place to allow the vehicles to cross the okay. county highways. And then the, the attachment B is the actual statute um, that shows that um, it says that they're not allowed on, on, on county roads unless there's an ordinance in place. So. Okay. And so you're looking for what I would like to see changed in the ordinance? Correct. Okay. Yeah. You, you're you here for a request. This is why... This is why we can't do uh, the golf course. These are the reasons. And um, it's kind of hard to get around them. Us uh, owning that highway and being liable for it. That's my concern, is, is the liability with this. I, I just, go ahead. This is just a information item for us today but as you go back I would I think that's a very good point maybe if you could point pinpoint what you'd like to actually change in the ordinance if you had actual terminology that we could discuss mm -hmm. but I think also discussing with the town if it's not you know it, the best route in my mind is for it to not be a county road if you want to have control over it that's the best way for this to go forward I understand that takes that involves cost um, but as you say you'll get motor, motor fuel and and perhaps It'll be generally positive for the community if those businesses survive, you know, but you have control. So those are the two things I would hope that you could comment on when we come back as an action item is that if you want to transfer them, if you feel comfortable with that, or you can give specific verbiage about what you'd like to see change. My concern is, you know, we can't just change this for the whole county, right? We have to have very specific language. You know, we're not going to just let golf carts be on any county road. So we have to have really specific guidance about what it is exactly you want to change. And I guess that's my concern. I don't know that we have the the power to say, Hudson, it's okay for you, but Leroy, it's not okay for you. I don't know. Uh, we might need to get that clarification from the state's attorney or whatever. Can we, can we pick and choose which highways we allow them to be on? Um, <clears throat> hi. At the moment, we don't have any ordinance that currently talks about this situation. So in order to do that, so what you have here is an example of the closest thing we have. We would have to create a new section of our code to do that. And we could craft it in such a way that it carves out specific um, portions of the road. But like you said, we'd have to be able to figure out what they would be and justify those. But at the moment, nothing exists. So we'd be starting from scratch to do that. Um, technically speaking, there's nothing that prohibits us from doing that. I think our precedent has been that when we make a general rule about our roads, we do it on all roads at the same time, as opposed to carving out half a mile here or a quarter mile there. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of the ordinance as we have it now is always as a whole when we apply our rules. Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, to other villages. I know Leroy, for instance, there's a county road on the northern edge of town that goes pretty much residential, goes past the grade school, that I wouldn't see a lot of issues. There's also a county road that's uh, Chestnut Street that goes from downtown to Route 74, goes by the McDonald's. I can see issues on that, having that a county road. So I guess if my opinion would be if we do this, we've got to find a way of selecting certain stretches or certain parts of the county roads to allow it. And my concern is, again, that then they're going to come back and say, well, how come they can do it on this road or whatever? And if we have a good answer, then then that's fine. So that's just my thought. I'd like to find I'd like to find a way of doing it again. I, I think that it's it'd be good for the for the citizens. It'd be good for the businesses. I think it's a good it's a good thing all around. And and again, as you said, a, a golf cart is probably no more dangerous than a bicycle in some instances. But we've got to make sure we find a way of doing it fairly and safely, I believe. Member Friedrich? Yes, Leah, just to uh, give you a little history, 
we did this last year with the Village of Downs. We were gonna turn over a section of County Highway to the city, just like everybody else. The board voted unanimously against it. You start doing this with one, and uh, every town and village is different because we have different county roads in it. And when you um, turn over the roads to a town and, and give it up, our concern back then was then we lose control. So um, if you live in town, if your block all agrees that they should take over the maintenance of the street and it's your street, that's that it sounds good in theory, but long term, uh, it's been done a couple times, but here recent, um, we denied the village of Downs. Now I understand that. I just, you know, if it's that important, then that might be the solution, you know, because I do worry about our code becoming a litany of tiny exceptions. Rather than, I mean, I like the fact that there we've made a decision based on safety issues and and as a, liability issues as a county, and then if the code gets turned into just one exception after the next, that's way too complicated. And we always get criticized for way too complicated codes, right? It gets too complicated, and it's much harder to enforce if there are a thousand little exceptions in each township and each area. So if it's that important, maybe you need to consider that. If they want to do it, then they're going to have to take over the maintenance of that road. I understand it comes with a lot of risk. I, I totally understand it. But I mean, I suppose I'm saying, how important is it to you to have this possibility? And if it's that important and you want to take over the cost for that, then maybe that's a route to think about. But I, I don't know. I'm just not in favor of creating a county code that's just Swiss cheese, you know, that it's a, one rule for one rule that is undermined by a thousand exceptions and then we'll spend our whole time debating exceptions you know and then circumstances on roads change obviously the dollar general was added that has changed the the situation right if another store is added and the traffic increases or if a store goes out of business and the traffic decreases are we going to change our ordinance every time you know that just becomes onerous i think and dangerous It should be a discussion. Yeah, yeah. And I'm protective of our county highway roads. I think we've owned them since the county started, and we're going to maintain control of them throughout. That's my opinion. And not the township, our transportation committee would love to give up responsibility. It's There's a lot of work uh, maintaining these roads in these towns. Nonetheless, that's our responsibility. We own, we own our county highways. But if they want to do something that we just can't stomach, that would be the only way, right? <laughs> Anybody else? Member Thompson? Uh, do we have uh, cost numbers and revenue numbers that they could, we could share with them as far as they, if, if the, the transfer would go? as they discuss that as an option? For like a jurisdictional transfer of the yeah, roads? Yeah, because they, they would want to know what those, I didn't know if we had numbers that we could share with them as they look at that as an option. So I'm not saying we should or shouldn't, but um, and if we don't, that's fine. I just No, I don't know. That, I mean, we really wouldn't have to, there wouldn't necessarily have to be a cost component to it. It would just be. But there is a cost to maintaining. Yeah, they're maintaining or, or whatever. What, what their maintenance would be. Yeah. Uh, but no, I don't, I would not have that. Offset because then they'd also get some motor fuel tax, motor fuel tax, right? Not technically, the municipality would not because theirs is based on population. Um, the townships are based on the road miles, and the county is based on um, the registration reg reg registration fees in, in that particular county. So, so it would be a, a new cost for them. Yes, that. yes. Okay. The good news is Franklin Street would be re just. You recently resurfaced, so that would be a <laughs> right, would be cost you wouldn't have to do for a while. Right, right. 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 Okay, Member Layman. The thing that just keeps coming back to me is in the the state kind of statute is that public safety will not be jeopardized, 
and I'm wondering if there are some additional safety opinions that would be helpful to, to be brought in to make sure that, you know, through our discussions that we keep that, uh, you know, top of mind. And I'm not sure who those folks might be, but I'd, I'd look to you all for uh, suggestions and opinions on who might be a, a great resource to determine the public safety aspects of this measure. I wonder if, uh, I assume you have a county engineers association, if you could, if you could reach out to them to find out other, other municipalities or villages or whatever that have allowed it on their county roads, you know, and how they went about doing it. Again, according to the state statute, it's one thing, but again, they may have particular code uh, statutes. I did. Um, I didn't reach out to all counties, but I did reach out to um, Peoria County, Champaign, Vermilion, Sangamon, some of the counties that are our size, and um, they do not have uh, an ordinance whatsoever or allow um, the non-vehicles on their okay. county highways. All right. Okay. Um, would you like to see anything else? No. I just want to thank you for considering this. Uh, there may not be any other counties that have it currently, but I think the way things are going, there probably will be in the future. And so we want to really thank you for considering this. And we will get back to you with a recommendation on, you know, how, how we suggest the ordinance be changed. And uh, we'll, we'll get that back to you. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys coming. Any other discussion on this? Yes. Yeah. Dale Sparks. I've been with Hudson for almost 12 years now as chief. I'm stepping down, retiring this month. Uh, that's why Mark Cotty is now the chief. Uh, I wrote this ordinance with the village attorney. We've been in effect for probably, I'm thinking, 2011 or 12 have had no incidents at all with golf carts as far as traffic accidents. We haven't been on your county highways, and, and that's been written so we wouldn't be on there. But I would like to say, if we don't have the opportunity to use the highway, would you consider a right-of-way for those streets to get to streets so they can cross? That's a way for us to get to Dollar General and the streets that are landlocked, you can't get to the rest of the village, use it that way. We're already preparing to put the sidewalk in to Dollar General. That's seven feet wide, I believe. So it would be wide enough for a golf cart and be off the streets. And secondly, then, the speed study, I, and I had no idea it was being done out there. We, by law, are required to allow 500 feet from the first 30 sign to people slow their traffic down. So we can't even regulate that area out there, and there's really no reason for a golf cart to be out that far. Uh, they're, they're not going to get on the interstate. If they're out that far, then they're, you know, they need to be talked to anyhow. You know, in town, we have a very low accident rate, very, very low, and we hope to keep it that way. So, I mean, it's been very successful in Hudson. So I just want you to keep that in mind. The police are watching, and we do stop and talk to people on a regular <coughs> basis. We do require seat belts on all of the carts. So, okay. Have you got any questions? Member Thompson. So the current sidewalk going in seven feet. If we, you probably want it wide enough to where allow golf carts to, to pass. Yeah, I understand. Uh, um, I'm just so. What, what would that need to be? What would that width need to be to do that? Because if you're doing the project, a little extra concrete, I mean, right. obviously there's, there's cost to it, but you know, when you got people out there, it's not a, it's not like a double. Yeah, I would, you know, just, I would probably say you need eight to ten foot for the golf cart itself, and then you know, five foot 30, 20, 30 percent so. more concrete. Yeah, so. well, which again, really wouldn't you know, be all it's that being much. Designed because, for foot traffic now right. only. Because then we, we could get told we couldn't be on the right of way with it. Possibly get the, the uh, bicycles off the street as well. Yeah, that would be a wonderful. Get the, especially the young kids. So we're re we would really be talking about two stretches, one to the Dollar General and then the one over on the east side. That's a major have. concern, isn't that right, Dave, or not? I'm sorry, I didn't understand He's the question. He's the two, two sections from Kenneth to east and then to Dollar General from, from 
Shiner, Shiner. Or whatever. Yes, those those are the main concerns. So the Casey's downtown, they, they it's inconvenient for them, but they can still access that. They can cross on West Street. Yes. That to me would so be it, a variance. Is that what you're saying to allow to allow that? Uh, yeah, if you would allow the variance, if we can't get to the streets or use the streets, a variance to allow to get access to the areas that we would like to get to. Would we be able to get a cost on that, what the additional would be to get that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I'd be all for that. Double it. If they're building it. Are you building the sidewalk now? They've got it engineered, ready to start. I don't know where we, they're at. We have it engineered. We have part of it dug. And none of the concrete is actually poured yet, but we we have the okay from the county. And uh, as we speak, they're probably digging more of it now to prepare for it. So I, th I think when this was discussed before, we yeah. actually, we we requested that the golf cart go off outside the county right away. So the kind of limited our liability whatsoever. Um, if the 15 foot sidewalk, let's say, could be done, but there's a, a, a box culvert right there in between, right by Casey's, that's really narrow. That I think it actually, the sidewalk's going to be narrow, like five, five foot there with a rail. So, I mean, that box culvert has to be extended out, which, which can be done. But uh, um, then I think we'd have to put some type of barrier between, you know, um, some like delineators that would separate the golf cart from the from the pedestrian, um, but I mean, this could all be done, but it's all going to be at co additional cost to the village. Right. Uh, with the timeline that, that they're already started, is that even something that we could pursue? I'm sorry, did you ask what the timeline was? If, yeah, if they're already out there working, I mean, is if this is a direction you would I, want to I head. don't have a specific start date on when we're going to do the concrete. Uh, we done the planning and we have the okays and uh, it's more of an issue of how many rainy days are we going to have between now and the end of the month. I'm sure we'll be pouring concrete this month for it. Pedestrians getting to the Dollar General is also a major concern for us and so that's why we're, we're putting in the sidewalk for it. I'd, I'd also like to add that our speed limit on our golf carts is 20 mile an hour. We have we have snowmobiles coming in on the right of way all the time. That's hard for us to regulate, but they're on the right of way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So then, maybe by by next month, we could have some more information on on the what we can do to help them out again, as far as adding to the sidewalk or whatever. Yeah, really, that should come from them because they're the ones that provided the sidewalk plans and they engineered the sidewalk plans and we just approved it. So um, they could hire their engineer to do that and try to figure out a way to get the pedestrians and the golf cart, the, essentially a, a pedestrian golf cart path together. Okay. All right. Member Layman. Yeah. And with that, in focusing on the idea of pedestrians and golf carts together, uh, what are the, the measures in place to make sure that those pedestrians are now safe? seeing that their area is with golf carts going 20 miles per hour when they're walking. And I'd just love to hear more information on potential plans and like that, whether from the engineers or, or whomever might be the expert in that regard. Okay, I believe it was quite recent that we found out we had to make part of the sidewalk seven foot instead of uh, conventional four foot. And you guys, I believe, are the ones that are requiring that. Yeah, because the, the original side was five foot, but there was going to be like a two foot grass area between the, the curb and, and it would be hard to maintain. So we decided it needed to be seven foot for the whole the whole length and for that one block. Okay, but that's just for one block. Correct. Correct. So the majority of the sidewalk is not seven foot. There's just one section of it. So actually, that's... I don't, I don't think the intention was to allow both golf carts and pedestrians in that one. But I think the area that seven foot was behind the curb from Casey's to Shiner Street, if I remember right. And so 
And so that would be really where the problem would need to be addressed at. And then you got, then you cross, you cross the road and then you're from Shiner to Dollar General on the south side of the road. And I, there probably is enough right away there. And I think that's, that's off. That's where I think it was five, going back to five foot sidewalk. So, excuse me, right there by Casey's uh, where the walk was going to be five foot and there was the two foot grass strip. Um, on ADA standards, if you have sidewalk abutting to the back of curb, it has to be a minimum of six feet. And so our thought on that was, you know, the wider the better, because then you could get at least two, um, say, moms with strollers passing each other going through there at the same time instead of narrowing it back down. And then we were trying to maximize the width of sidewalk going across the box culvert as well. So um, once you get past that going to the west, then you can narrow it down because you're further away from the back of curb for, or the road. So that's kind of our logic behind that. Okay, um, so the next item then is B3 Division Street in Chenoa. And Jerry, you wanna lead us on that? So I believe that um, the mayor, Sanoa, sent uh, a letter to everybody on the committee. And um, so as you, you recall back, I don't, know, I don't have the dates, but earlier this year, we did, uh, we put the paperwork in for a jurisdictional transfer from uh, Route 24 to Route 66 in Chenoa. And once we resurfaced the road that, um, that Snow would take the road over. Um, as an incentive for Snow doing that, they were they were needing to upgrade their, their water main and we they had estimates for their water main to uh, to, to redo that construction. Um, and so the estimated cost was uh, two hundred thousand dollars, let's say. And we provided funds of two hundred twenty five thousand dollars for them to do the water main work before we were gonna do our resurfacing project. In turn, they took bids on a water main and the lowest bid came in at 430,000. And so, um, and I don't know if that's, I think the time of year um, that they were requesting to get it all completed this year, um, the, the increased cost of materials. And um, so, so now they're, re they're coming back to us requesting more money that, to help with offset their, the offset the additional cost of the water main project. And so, um, so I guess we've got a couple options here. We could, you know, go ahead and, and give them the money or we could um, go with the jurisdictional transfer and agreement the way it's set up now and we just do the project and whether they do their water main or not, then the road gets turned over to them or we nullify the uh, intergovernmental agreement that's currently in place and they pay us back the 225000 and then we read, we um, resurface the road and then it's our roads to keep maintaining. Member Light, or Member Klein. Um, so according to the letter, which I would just point out that more than half, uh, half of the committee are not gentlemen. So <laughs> Mayor Chinoa, that was <laughs> not terribly kind, but um, how in the world, so the, where the original estimate just came from an, an informal discussion? I mean, because it says we were assured um, by our engineers and the contractor that they deal with. So was this just sort of a number that was tossed out? Was there any? No, it was actually, so um, So last year we did a project um, in Chenoa, south of 24, um, to the, down to the school. And the city at that time um, redid their water main in that location. And uh, so I think they were looking, it was about the same distance. So they were looking, thinking it was gonna cost roughly about the same, but they did have their engineers do an estimate as well as a local contractor do an estimate and they all came in you know, pretty close to the same. So that's that's where the number was. Right, so they were non-binding, so these weren't bids. No. So we made an agreement with them, not on a bid, but on a Correct. sort of word of mouth estimation based on right. the work that they had done. Right. I think the intent was it was probably going to come in less than what, you know, even less than the 225000 and right. 
Um, I mean, I think, you know, if we're going to end up having to, this variance is enormous. Right? The difference is, is right. you know, it's not just a little bit of money. Right. So I would hope that in the future we require a bid, some sort of binding bid before we make some sort of commitment. You know what I mean? Financial commitment. I don't. When you when you, when we're making an agreement at two hundred twenty five two hundred twenty five thousand dollars based on something that's not binding, we're setting ourselves up for big variance. We could be, yeah. yeah. I mean, in this case, it you know, benefited us. If, but, sure, right. But, but, but could, then the project yeah. doesn't get done. I guess you know. Right. Um, I think we're all aware of. At least I am of <laughs> drainage issues and 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 drain line issues. So. Um, you said that we have a couple of options, and one of them is to just step out of that of the relationship, step out of the agreement, and, and that we we can do that because it's in violation. Or I mean, what is the basis of you know when we sign when we sign an agreement? If if one of our options is to is to step out of the agreement, I want to know what basis we have. Well, I think that just being uh, good neighbors and good partners is. is Basically, really the only, the only basis because we could we could still move forward. All the the jurisdictional transfer paperwork and has been approved by IDOT, so it's just waiting for us to finish our research portion of our project. And we've already paid them the two hundred twenty five thousand. So um, if we were if we were finished if we do the research and project, then then the roads the roads, roads are done, there. but they owe us two hundred twenty five thousand dollars. No. They can just hold on to that money, and when they feel like using it, yeah, and it'd be their road at their time at that time, and then they, you know, would put it back. As and are they bound to use that money on that particular project? Um, the way the agreement's written, it does say for water main improvements. Okay, so they could do some other kind of water main improvement, but it can't be used on sidewalks or something else. It can no. only be used on. Okay, thank you. So is the issue then if we go ahead with the? Resurfacing does the water main cross the highway in a couple places? Is that the issue? That, yeah, that's the so issue. So they tear up our blacktop wherever that happens. It's not like right. it's completely under the road the whole direction or anything. Right. Um, okay. I mean, they could bore it on certain locations, right. but then there's also some parking areas that are, that are going to get paved. And so then they, they're still going to be tearing up uh, a portion of, of the hot mix. Well, it looks like his, his suggestion or request was to either give them the um, another 125,000 or nullify the agreement. It's kind of, it looks to me like that's what he's asking for. Yes. So, um, he doesn't necessarily say, well, get, you know, we'll keep that, the money that we got and then we'll kick in later on or whatever. He doesn't really want to do that either. So, um, uh, another option that, that could benefit, um, the, the village is to rebid the work in the spring. And maybe the contractors wouldn't be so so busy at, at that time, and there wouldn't be necessarily a hard completion date to get that completed. And you know, maybe the material cost would come down. Um, but I mean, we're seeing material costs all across the board, everything you know, jumping up. So I don't know if that's going to come down. But I mean, our signs have increased costs, culverts have increased costs, you know, vehicles and everything else. So I mean, it's just one thing after another. But I mean, it. It, that could, I don't know how much it'd save, but it could potentially, you know, save something to where maybe it would be more, if, um, you know, maybe they could get it down to where the village could handle the project. And will it be a big issue if we delayed our job, our work that we were going to do? I don't believe so. You know, I'd like to get it done next year, but if we got to delay it to the fall, I don't really think that's that would be a problem for us. Okay. Member Friedrich. Jerry, what's your opinion of the three options? Give me your opinion. Well, I don't think that we should, um, I don't think we should give them any more money. Okay. So I guess the, the two options I would lean towards would be to nullify the agreement and get the $225,000 back or just continue on as we're, we already have in set in, set in place. Okay. I think we ought to wait. Yeah, can we can we make an, an adjustment to the agreement, you know, giving it an extra year in the window or something for them to rebid, and if they don't get a good price, then we can nullify? I mean, if they get a price that's close enough that they can handle it, the, the town might change their mind. 
if it's you know only twenty five thousand dollars right or hundred you know right so I mean can we just mod is the, does the agreement have a date certain on it or well, I, I don't believe it does okay so you're shaking your head no so you're like I don't know I don't know. okay because <laughs> if we could if we have to adjust the agreement to give him a little bit more time to try that he might change his decision yeah. in the letter seems like that's why I say delay. If I can interrupt, my, I'm looking at the agreement right now, and there is no uh, provision written down about how to um, get out of it. So it would just be by agreement of the parties, um, and there's nothing about a timeline. The only thing I can think of at this point is if the uh, acceptance by IDOT would change, and I don't know that would leave that to Jerry if the timeline changed. No, uh, yeah, it's really dependent on our, our, when our project's completed. And I've uh, talked to IDOT um, about, kind of gave them a heads up of what was going on. And, you know, if the agreement is nullified, then we have to send a letter to IDOT, you know, explaining why. And then they would contact Springfield and it would, it would probably just, you know, be set aside at that point. But uh, really, the whole thing is just based on our construction and when we, you know, when we do it. I mean, we could potentially even wait another whole another year if we didn't get to it next year it's probably not the end of the world um you know we've, we've been doing some other improvements up there drainage improvements uh, co replacing culverts and that trying to get ready for for this project but um it certainly wouldn't be a, a problem uh member thompson first then member Fly. yeah i would agree that we if we could just be patient maybe we can get through this tomorrow this turmoil that's going on right now and, and trying to bid this now is it's just silly. <laughs> so if we, even if we had to wait a year or two, whatever, things might get back to normal, and, and we could move forward with the agreement as stand as it stands. You know, get pre, you know, get pretty close. So, so right. just be patient. Can, can you offer him that? That, you know, maybe he's thinking that you guys have a date that you're going to work on this and say, we're willing to push that project to the back of our list if you want to rebid it. He may say no. They may want that road done now, but give them that option to, to yeah, sure. push it back. And because he's in his letter, he seems A or B, you know, one or the other. Right. So if you give him that option, maybe maybe he still wants the road done now and they'll forego those pain, the, the improvements to the drain, but uh, give him the chance. So sure. delay if he wants, I guess is what I'm saying. Right. Uh, member Wachinski and Member Rogal, does that do you agree with that? I mean, is that okay if we go ahead and do that? Yeah, I just, I agree. I don't think we should give him any more money. I, and again, I think at this point, we're only risking the possible increase in, in road materials. But I mean, if that happens, that's just going to happen. I think that's just, uh, it may go the other way. Okay. You got a consensus from us. I think that's probably, again, it's not really an action item. So at least you know kind of where the board, where the board's at. <clears throat> okay. Um, do you have anything else? Nope, I think I'm good. Does any member have anything? I just wanted quickly to see um, where we were at with the uh, the wind farm and bellflower as far as any progress in township agreements or anything. Do you know where we're, where they're at? Yes, I know both both townships have uh, have an attorney, a lo actually a local attorney here in Bloomington, and uh, so there's been additional meetings, at the, but. So they're, they're just been back and forth okay. with, uh, between the township um, attorneys and uh, in Benergy. So okay. there, nothing's been signed off yet. Okay, at least they're, at least they're talking. That's, that's yes. good. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, administration, you have anything? Okay. Well, uh, with that, uh, this meeting's adjourned. Thank you all very much.